What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about some new information surrounding a pitch for a new Jurassic World game. A long time ago, a sequel to Jurassic Park Trespasser, believe it or not, was pitched to Steven Spielberg himself before the new trilogy of films was being made. This pitch trailer would later get leaked online with a ton of enthusiasm behind its subject matter. Now, a few years ago, I actually tried to get some information on the details surrounding this idea, and unfortunately, a lot of that info wound up not only being being untrue, but spectacularly wrong with an entire revelation of how this game trailer came to be, how it eventually evolved into a new trilogy of films, and what was going on behind the scenes has come out, which is of course the subject of today's video. Now before I go any further, I want to mention to you guys that today's video is sponsored by Established Titles, and they're offering something extremely cool that I think some of you may like. Check out this proclamation they just sent me to crying myself Lord Clayton now that I'm a landowner in Scotland. Pretty cool, right? Well, this project can grant any of you the title of Lord or Lady as well, and an official certificate with a crest alongside your own square foot of dedicated land in Scotland. It's based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as Lord or Lady, and with every order that these guys make, they're also dedicated to planting a tree by working with global charities around the world. Once you become a part of established titles, you can even officially change your name to Lord or Lady on things like credit cards or plane tickets. So if you want to be a part of a similar elite social class like the father of Jurassic Park, John Hammond, and humbly myself, you should check out established titles and see what they've got available for you. Also, if you use my landing page, you're more than likely going to have land located next to each other and myself so we could start our own little kingdom in Scotland with the first 200 people purchasing a title pack. This is an awesome last minute gift and Established Titles is running a huge sale right now. Plus, if you use the code Clayton, you get an additional 10% off. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Clayton and get 10% off right now and have fun knowing that a tree is getting planted out there somewhere. Anyways guys, this is something that I think a lot of you will like. So once again, thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to Jurassic Park. So, for starters, I want to just say that I actually covered this a long time ago. The problem was the information I got was completely false. Now, I don't know why the information I got was wrong, and basically what it detailed was that this had nothing to do with the video game and that it was all for Jurassic Park 4. It comes from an internal proof of concept idea that was helmed by Ian McKaig and David Krentz. The goal was to help kickstart what was planned as a comeback for the Jurassic Park film series. I hope that the reason that info was relayed back to me wrong had nothing to do with someone trying to steal anybody else's work on a project, but I don't have a very good opinion of Hollywood projects and people in general, so I don't know, man. Either way, Seamus Blackley himself has come out to actually talk about this, and uh, he ended his little thing by saying, this poor guy, I have no idea how he could be so incredibly wrong and so confidently tell this whole crazy story, but hey, good for him, right? And he's right, like, again, I tried to get confirmation on it, but uh, the best thing I can do now is, like, retract that and tell you guys what really did happen, because we didn't have this information a long time ago, and we do now. So let's start with the beginning. In 2012, he left his job at CAA to work with Steven Spielberg on a game, a new Jurassic Park story, to make good on the skid mark they left with Trespasser. He wrote a story and design and made a trailer. The management at Universal changed and the project became a film. Now I'm pretty sure you can guess what film that was. So in 1995 he goes back and says that he had just designed and shipped a game that was a big hit and made a lot of money for its publisher. He was unhappy at the developer so he took an offer from the brand new and exciting company DreamWorks. He'd been working on locomotion physics, which was really new, and the only way DreamWorks would fund a game with it was for him to make a Jurassic Park title. So he did, and it led the brilliant team straight to hell. Here's the kind of description the game got. Trespasser is a frustrating game filled with boring game playing annoying bugs. It's the most frustrating game someone has ever played of all the games they've ever reviewed. It has to be one of the most disappointing. Now, side note, I love Trespasser. It has a lot of problems, but it was incredibly ambitious for the time and it opened up a lot of lore. The lore makes no sense, like when you actually try to chronologically tie it into the Jurassic Park and Lost World movies, because they tried to use the Michael Crichton novels as a basis, but the timeline just is so wonky and wrong. I really like the game though, I always have, and I've talked about it on this channel quite a bit. So, apparently Seamus got a lot of death threats, which sucks, 
Uh, he figured he'd never work again. It did lead to him ma uh, meeting Bill Gates and impressed him with the physics and rendering, which, of course, came to the work on the Xbox. He eventually made sure to establish a lot of IP ownership. And uh, he met Steven Spielberg, had a good career with him. Uh, he'd see him in meetings and sometimes do stuff with him on games or movie stuff. And he said the attorney, Harold Brown, became a mentor of some sort to him. One day... Seamus Blackley gets a call from some guys at Universal. Steven was thinking of restarting the Jurassic Park franchise, and we thought it should relaunch with a new Trespasser. So, basically, they relaunch like Trespasser 2. The next thing he knows, Kathy Kennedy, which he loves, tells him he needs to, one, write a story and gameplay pitch for Steven Spielberg and the co-presidents of Universal, and two, make a trailer to show Steven Spielberg. So he says that's a vomit in the trash can kind of moment right there, a trailer for Steven, sure. He wrote a story about dinosaurs on Isla Sorna and the research sites escaping, and about how humans had to come to terms with the original owners of the planet. His thesis was that audiences wanted to know the dinosaurs more than to kill them, not monsters, earthlings. And with the help of incredibly talented artists and coders, he made a game design, an art design, and a story bible. They called it Jurassic World. And they made the trailer. It was leaked a long time ago and people were very confused by it. They had brought these dinosaurs back, sentient creatures, individuals, and so they need to learn to share, even be friends with them. In their game, the humans that want to eliminate the dinosaurs would have been the enemies, while the dinosaurs become our allies. By saving them, they save themselves. This sounds extremely similar, and I'm not sure if there's any correlation, but a lot like Ark Survival Evolved, and I wonder if they had any information on this cancelled title from back in the day. Unfortunately, that couldn't save the game. Steven loved the concept, according to Kathleen Kennedy. He loved the trailer. The story was approved. They started hiring devs, actually. Then the co-president of Universal left. Everything was scrambled. And the next thing he knew, he was sending all of their art assets to Frank Marshall, who was producer on all three of the Jurassic World movies. So he, he goes on to say that Frank Marshall's an awesome person. He's the nicest guy in Hollywood. There was a movie in the works, and the cancellation of the game meant they got every. Thing. Honestly, that was the best outcome Seamus says was possible. So he's going to eventually share storyboards and art and stuff. And uh, I'm really excited for this. I will say this, Seamus, I hope you weren't offended by any of the video I did about the Jurassic World pitch trailer. I directly tried to source that from people that said that they knew everything about what happened behind the scenes. But the funny thing about this, I actually had one guy in my ear going, yeah, like a video game, right? And I said, well, where's your evidence for it being a video game? He's like, no, Clayton, believe me, it was a video game. And I was like, well, I've got all these other people saying, like, it was for Jurassic Park 4. And again, I hope that wasn't to, like, push... Seamus Blackley and Trespasser 2's work under the carpet because that's you know not cool but anyways I find it very interesting that Jurassic Park Trespasser 2 not only almost came out but it's kind of cancellation is what led to the Jurassic World series of films I've never worked with Seamus before although I did work on a project that he also worked on which was the angry video game nerd Trespasser video and uh, that was a lot of fun I think that with Trespasser 2, it would have been really cool to see them do something really groundbreaking early in the 2010s. But, you know, eventually this all got scrapped and we see a lot of the imagery of like Quetzalcoatlus and people like surfers getting attacked in the Jurassic World movies. I personally, I still think Jurassic World needs a very good game title. I would love for them to restart this, especially now that dinosaurs have gone all over the planet. It's probably the best idea to combine something like Trespasser with Ark for a modern audience. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole story of the Jurassic World pitch trailer. Uh, again, guys, this is something that I really wish we could have seen. It's unfortunately we never got to, but I don't know. I, I thought Trespasser was cool. I understand completely the criticisms people made for it, but that was a groundbreaking game. It did a lot of good for not only, you know, video games in general, but the Jurassic Park franchise. A lot of fans really, really like what they were doing with the Richard Attenborough, like, memoirs and stuff, and especially the lore they added into Isla Sorna, which some of it has even been incorporated into the wider Jurassic World canon. With that being said, guys, I'd love to hear what all of you guys think. Would you like to see a new Jurassic World game apart from these park builders, which I'm so tired of? Would you like to see something like this? And what are your thoughts on the cancellation of Trespasser 2 as well as the eventual evolution into a film series. Whatever your thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. 
Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.